today I'm going to show you my new second hand container that I just refurbished. Hello, I'm Griffiths. Welcome to Green and Griffith. Here we talk everything beekeeping, farming, countryside living. Now we do reviews as well. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I took delivery of a second hand shipping container and I thought I made a massive mistake. It came absolutely battered and uh, it wasn't supposed to be like that. The stock photo that I saw of the container looked okay, but the one that came to me was absolutely battered and it needed a full paint job and sealing and everything to get it right. And um, just finished doing that now. I just want to show you this container and hints and tips of what not to do when you're buying a container for yourself. So we needed a container, we needed some more clean, dry storage. These types of sheds, they're not uh, that good if you want to keep food grade kit and equipment and stuff that you don't want to get dirty. So a container was a purpose made instant shed uh, on the farm. That would be ideal for us to store some stuff. And uh, so we went on these online websites, started talking to some container companies and this container was a vented container which I wanted because if you've worked with containers before, having a vented one drastically decreases the amount of condensation and mouldy air you'll get in the, in the container so I wanted it vented and they had these second hand ones, looked quite good. Uh, the stock photo that I saw of the, the standard type shipping container looked amazing, ideal for what we needed, so we bought one and uh, came delivered on a big lorry. I uh, took it off and I was very, very disappointed with the quality of it. And um, in fairness to the company that I bought it from, I took photos, it had a hole in the back of it. It was supposed to be totally dry, no holes. Uh, the dents, the rust, the hole in the back and uh, February, the company, they did drop um, a lot of money off the price of it because uh, they were they were caught just as much as me because these companies you're dealing with the broker or so the middleman they've got an office somewhere they know the transportation people they know the shipping companies that sell these containers and they broker the deal for you so that uh, i would have thought they would have chased the money back with the container company or the shipping docks whoever sold them the container uh, to bring the price down so Number one rule of buying a container, make sure you see the one you're buying. Don't buy one off a stock photo, because I learned the hard way with this. Took a lot of time, a lot of money to refurb it up. Now it's really good, but uh, I would have rather not needing to paint it all up and do all that extra work to it, but it's come okay in the end. And the second bit of advice I'd say is if you can afford it, buy a new shipping container. So they've got these new shipping containers. Um, it's only been at sea once. So they build the shipping containers in China and then they send the shipping container over to your country full of goods. And then they sell that container straight away. So there'll be no dents in it, the wood on the floor will be new. The paint will be unscratched, no dents, just a really good uh, shed really, or a building for you. Um, I definitely buy one of those new ones if you've got the budget to do it. And another thing I learned, I wanted a 10 foot container, but turns out 10 foot and 12 foot containers cost more money than a 20 footer. And containers actually only come in 20 foot lengths like this one and 40 foot. So all the 10 and the 12 foot containers you see, um, a manufacturing or a welding company has cut down a 20 footer and made it into 10 or 12 so they end up being more expensive because there's a lot of labour involved in converting them to a smaller size. So that's it about hints and tips on buying the containers and the type of containers that's out there. Let's have a look and we'll see what I've done inside this one. So as I'm keeping a lot of stuff in here that I want really clean don't want anything to get wet and I want it to be totally insect bug proof, rodent proof and more importantly bee proof. So we'll open this up and no I am not gonna grow marijuana in here even though it looks exactly like that type of construction. 
I've cladded it up with insulation all the way around, taped up all the joints, and I've painted the floor in a garage floor paint. Um, number one, all this insulation, I've got so much light in here, there's, uh, I'm not gonna wire this up to the electric or anything. So just being in, you know, having the foil side is great for light. But the biggest thing with this is, I don't want any condensation in here. I don't want massive fluctuations in temperature in here. And I just want things to be dry, no drips. All this insulation here now is gonna do that perfectly. And I've got vents. So this container's got four vents. So I'm not gonna have stagnant or moldy air in here. Container's ventilated, but it's gonna protect it from the big fluctuations in heat. Now, a little bit of how I put these uh, insulation boards up. Now the easy thing would have been done was to batten it all up, tech that through the steel, then screw this insulation boards onto the container. I didn't want to drill any holes in the steel work whatsoever. I just think that's defying the object of buying a sealed container. Uh, we've gone through the work of welding the hole in the back and everything. This container now is totally sealed and uh, I want to insulate it. So the way I did it was, I put expanding glue on the top and on the bottom, and then I cut the boards perfectly and pushed it in. So the pressure of the joint or the board being slightly too big, mill or too, too big, meant that it'll hold itself in there. I've wedged it in tight and then give it a day, the glue will hold that as a backup as well. And that's exactly what I've done with the roof as well. And uh, it's worked out really well. All the glue is holding all this in place now and you need good quality, multi-purpose uh, expanding glue because your dent here and there on the container, uh, you want to make sure that your glue is catching. And then I put a little bit of two by one down the edges so these can't kick out at the bottom at all and it just gives me something to wheel up hard up to and it's going to hit the wood and um, not the insulation board because I don't think I'm going to clad this up in uh, plywood. I was tempted to buy 3mm thick plywood and cladding it all over again. Um, at this stage, because I'm only going to use this for storage, I'm not going to do that now. But if this use were to change, then I probably will do uh, the extra cladding work out of 3 mil plywood. And that's all I'd do there. Same thing, I'd glue it, stick it on the side, and just put small screws in. So I'd screw into the board, and then once the glue sets, that's it. These glues these days, they're, they're pretty much better than screws they can be. And uh, that's it, that's my container. And uh, I've seen a lot of really cool containers out there since doing this one, all the type of things that you can do with this. I mean, now that I've insted this up, this could be a massive warm room where you wanna melt honey down into. I've seen people, well, I've seen these new containers. Uh, I've seen a bare low beekeeping they started selling containers now, purpose built, purpose made for honey extracting. I know um, Honey Paws, uh, the company that does Honey Paws hives. I can't remember the, the, what the company's called. I think, they, I think they're called Honey Paws. They make containers, uh, purpose made containers that you can extract honey in um, with all the facilities in there. And you can just convert this. If I were to plywood this up, put a bit of plastic over the plywood, I mean, this is a perfect full grade room then. Get some water in there, and then you've got a perfect full grade container or building to extract honey out of. Now, the opportunities is endless of what you can do with a container. I mean, this is just my one that I've bought for storage. And, uh, but I think this is gonna be with me for life, really. Um, done a bit of work, spent a bit of money on it now, and, uh, We'll have years worth of service out of it. Just forgot to say, I am going to insulate the doors as well. And doing this is really easy. So I was wondering, how am I gonna do this? Right down there, we've got a bit of thin steel. I'm gonna tack um, two by one on top of this, and 
tack it down, metal screw, self-drilling screw, and it'll drill through there. Luckily enough, there's another one up there. Then I can just screw the insulation board on top of there then, and this entire container is gonna be insulated. Perfect. So, have you got a container? Have you done something? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear about it, or even better, see your container and see what you use your containers for. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and don't forget, if you like this video and you wanna watch more of the same kind of content, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I try my best to put new videos every week. Thanks for watching.